Podcast Personal Finance Edition. This is Rashmi, joined by my co-host Olivia for a rather interesting episode. Today, we're going to look at a more recent scandal in the world of finance with major implications on what sorts of investments are worth investing in and what's not worth it. We've all heard of the name Sam Bankman, Freed, and FTX at some point in the recent past, which are the center of a major cryptocurrency scandal. So we're going to run through what actually happened and see what that means for the future of cryptocurrency investment. So let's start with understanding what actually happened. First off, FTX. FTX was one of the largest digital currency exchanges for buying and selling cryptocurrencies. As cryptocurrencies became popular forms of investment, people began to turn towards sites like FTX because they could store cryptocurrencies directly into personal accounts known as crypto wallets or simply digital wallets like we discussed last episode. FTX grew popular quickly after its launch in 2019, and by January 2020, the company was worth around $32 billion. And FTX grew so fast from high-profile acquisitions of struggling competitors and aggressive marketing campaigns that promised people high yields. What made FTX stand out was its digital token FTT. It's common to have digital tokens on cryptocurrency platforms, and FTT offered various perks like discounts and NFT rewards. But this came crashing down in November of 2022, when what happened to be a small accounting oversight ended up being a major fraud, causing investors to lose out on billions of dollars. In November, Coindesk published an article stating that Alameda Research, another company owned by Bankman Freed, was heavily dependent on FTTs, with assets valued at around $5 billion. Soon, an FTX balance sheet was leaked, showing that it was also heavily dependent on the other company. So essentially, Alameda was borrowing extensive capital from FTX, later found to be mostly from customer deposits, and routinely borrowing money from FTX customer assets. And on the other hand, FTX was dependent on Alameda. And this, rightfully, caused customers to worry, especially when FTX and its sister companies did not want to produce balance sheets, meaning there was no record of whether or not FTX had the funds it actually needed to cover liabilities and customer assets, or if it was just borrowing for its, from its sister company and its sister company from it as well. Yeah, this is a huge scandal. And so... Because of this, the company just fell apart. There was a drop in value for FTT, and customers started withdrawing money en masse. FTX lost billions as customers withdrew their investments. Bankman Freed tried having Alameda Research sell assets to cover capital needed for withdrawals and was looking to cover a gap of around $8 billion between what he actually could pay back and what needed to be paid as people just kept withdrawing their investments. And on November 8th, FTX blocked customers who had yet to withdraw money from doing so, meaning people couldn't access their money. And when it couldn't pay back what had already been withdrawn, the company filed for bankruptcy. Mismanagement of funds between FTX, lack of liquidity, and the mass withdrawals essentially caused the company to crash, simplifying everything. And that's crazy to me because last episode we literally talked about how these are so volatile and so untrusty because they're not being regulated by governments. So this kind of goes to show like these type of companies are really not trustworthy. And Sam Bankman Freed ended up actually getting arrested on December 12th, 2022, about a month after the company collapsed under multiple fraud charges and was then indicted on eight criminal charges as well, including money laundering, wire fraud, campaign finance violations, and securities fraud. And that's not where the story ends, which just paints an even worse picture for cryptocurrencies. Bankman Freed's parents have been sued on suspicion of embezzling millions from the business for personal use, and this lawsuit was filed on September 18, 2023, so not all that long ago. This is still happening. The lawsuit is on the claim that his parents knew and ignored the fraud occurring at FTX. There's also dispute over the transfer of a home in the Bahamas and a $10 million cash gift from Bankman Freed. 
Well, Bankman Freed was recently found guilty on all of his charges, seven to be exact, including conspiracy of wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, to commit securities fraud, and more, and has been scheduled for sentencing sometime in March of 2024. His parents are still seeking to dismiss the FDX lawsuit, claiming to not have been involved in the firm's downfall at all. Man, this is getting dirty real fast. And FTX now has new management, and the scandal is mostly in the past, but that doesn't mean that the impact is over. Yeah, I would not want to invest in this company at all, even if it was under new management, quote-unquote. And demand for cryptocurrency as a whole understandably fell after the FTX scandal, though there has been some comeback since then. After the industry meltdown, Bitcoin crashed to its lowest price since 2020, but... Over time, it's changed. Yeah, and so since then, Bitcoin and other major tokens have risen in prices, and there has been a possibility of Bitcoin ETFs, all showing that the cryptocurrency markets have moved on since the crash of FTX. Well, FTX seemed to confirm skepticism about the instability of cryptocurrencies, which I still have that skepticism, I'll be honest, and concerns about its security among increased scams. It does seem that deterring investors is all that resulted because the market as a whole in cryptocurrency has bounced back since then. I mean, I'd hope so after so many years. But while we're on that topic, I do want to touch upon cryptocurrency ETFs. I find them a great way to gain exposure to cryptocurrencies without owning the currencies yourself, taking away some of the complexity. Yeah, so cryptocurrency ETFs have a few ways of tracking the performance of digital currency. There are spot ETFs, which directly hold the cryptocurrency, while other crypto ETFs invest in futures contracts, which is the same way that much of commodities trading occurs. And it's important to note that U.S. regulators did take a long time to approve cryptocurrency ETFs, even once they were available in Europe and Canada already. The Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC approved the first cryptocurrency futures ETFs for the U.S. in October 2021. And only recently, in January of 2024, have cryptocurrency spot ETFs been approved. This is super, super recent. Yeah, and there's only 11 Bitcoin spot ETFs that have been approved so far, which does open the door for more to possibly be approved in for trading in the near future, but still, 11's not that many. Cryptocurrency as a whole, and particularly in its ETF form, is still a developing asset class, so the market might look completely different in the future. But regardless of the uncertainty for cryptocurrency ETFs and the cryptocurrency market as a whole, it's important to stay knowledgeable on major events and investments as a whole to ensure you're making the best possible investing decisions for yourself as possible. Exactly. The fall of FTX had a domino effect on the entire cryptocurrency market, not just FTTs. Well, that's all for today's episode of Community Corner Podcast, Personal Finance Edition. Thanks for tuning in. This is Olivia and Rashmi, Rashmi.